What's up and welcome to Chart Center. Quick question, who is your role model? My role models are... Kelly Garibaldi Ocean. Ocean. Yes, it is Frank Ocean's world and we're just living in it. True. Now we have a lot to say about him this week, but first let's jump into the Billboard Hot 100 where 21 Pilots has two songs in the top five this week. The duo's Heathens is at number four and Ride jumps to number five of the Hot 100. That makes them only the third rock act ever with simultaneous top fives on the Hot 100. Do you know the other two? No. After The Beatles and Elvis Presley. Oh, well, thank you very much. That wasn't pretty good. Okay, well, let's dive into Mr. Ocean because not only does the long-awaited Blonde kick off at the top of the Billboard 200 this week, it's also the third largest debut of 2016. The top two, oh, just Drake's Views and Beyonce's Lemonade. They're your Mount Rushmore of charting albums so far this year. Now, Blonde is also Ocean's first number one album on the Billboard 200 outscoring 2012's Channel Orange, which debuted and peaked at number two. Well, Christina, there was so much hype and build up for this yes. album. People got mad on Twitter every time it was delayed and then boom, it was released. And there's two of them. See, first he released the visual album, Endless, as an Apple Music video stream. That one came out via Def Jam Universal Music Group. But then he dropped Blonde as an Apple exclusive two days later on his own label without Def Jam or Universal's involvement. That means his own profits have shot up for the proper album charting this week, while the biggest music company in the world and his ex-label are stuck with an overshadowed visual album that isn't for sale. All right, look who it is. It is Billboard's Dan Rice. He has been covering this all on Billboard.com. Question, did Frank Ocean win this battle? By every metric available to us, you would have to say that yes, he did win this battle. From what we've been told by sources, he was able to buy his way out of his contract after the second album. He walked away with freedom from his record contract. He was able to put out the music however he wanted to, and you know, he earned himself a lot more money in the process. Too. Well, I would have to ask you, how do you feel like this affects music fans as far as moving forward? Well, the big thing was Universal coming down afterward and saying, we're not going to allow our artists to release exclusives moving forward. Now, for the biggest record label in the world to pull all of their artists away from exclusives when that has been such a big battleground for Apple Music and Tidal lately, I think it makes music more available to more fans. I think that is something that the labels would like, that the artists would like, and that fans would enjoy as well. You know, too many fans are upset having to pay $9.99 for Tidal, $9.99 for Apple Music, $9.99 for Spotify. Why can't they get everything in one place? So we had Beyonce's visual album, we had Frank Ocean's visual album. So is this a new thing we're gonna see going forward? Uh, if you would call it the wave of the future, I think Prince might have had something to say with that. Okay. Wow. Uh, <laughs> Purple Rain. Oh, no, it's definitely a good way for an artist with so much creativity across so many different platforms to be able to express themselves in that way. And I think that a lot more artists will look at Frank Ocean and Beyonce and the success that they've had and say, I wanna do that too. I say. Give it up for my friend, Beyonce! Beyonce was on fire and Kanye West might still be talking. And did Drake try to propose to Rihanna? I think he did. It's time for a VMA's Rewind in Your Night That Was, presented by StubHub. Hey, Beyonce, you're gonna have to pay for that. Those are really expensive. Oh, oh, okay, never mind. I'll shut up now. Beyonce can do whatever she wants. So eight awards went her way, including Video of the Year for Formation. She now has the most video music awards ever, with her 22 overtaking Madonna's previous record of 20. Bow down to the queen. <laughs> of course, it was also a huge night for Rihanna, who spread out her performances over the course of the evening, finishing with Love on the Brain, her new single from Anti. <laughs> And then Drake showed his love, or declared his love, as he presented Riri with the Michael Jackson Video Vanguard Award. She's someone I've been in love with since I was 22 years old. Is Rihanna into him as I well? Don't know. I Do can't we need tell. to sit him down and have a talk about this? She kind of like turned away when he went to kiss her, so it was a little awkward. awkward. <laughs> <laughs> the Chainsmokers were also on hand to perform Closer with Halsey, and get this, the song is number one on the Hot 100 for the second week in a row. To be here and be performing our song when it's number one in the world is a big deal for us, you know? Number one on Billboard. We also caught up with Chance the Rapper on the red carpet, and he gave us a hot tip for his tour, which apparently is better than everybody else's. Make sure you come see me on tour, because, uh, well, it's mostly sold out, but like if, if you're in a city where it's not sold out, come through, because the show is crazy. 
It's better than Drake and Kanye said. Let us know your favorite VMA moments in the comments. Now, Tetris, I don't even have to ask oh, you what your favorite moment Brittany. was. It, Brittany, she performed with G-Eazy, she performed Make Me, and she killed it. Gets me every time. Oh, yeah, I've been waiting nine years on mm -hmm. this, but can we talk about the album? Yes, of I've course. I've prepared some comments. I'm sure you have. All right, let's move into Next Week Now, presented by StubHub. StubHub, your ticket out. On Friday morning at midnight, the world changed forever. Godney came down and blessed us with her Holy Spirit, and it was glory. Britney's ninth studio album dropped on all digital platforms. Yeah, there had been talk about an Apple exclusive, but nope, it went out to everybody that could grab it. Because Britney is about love. See, the album leaked before its release and I wouldn't touch it. I wouldn't either. She knows it. Mm. I stayed away because, hey, we're fans and we love our Godney. Preach. Now, the album is 12 tracks, but 17 if you get the deluxe, which you should have. It includes Make Me featuring g Easy. What's your favorite song? Because mine is better. Oh, I love better, mm -hmm. but I love Just Love Me because who can't just love? Britney Spears. <laughs> the bottom line is the girl is killing it with Carpool Karaoke, the new album that killer V and May performance, and her Vegas show. Britney Spears rock side of me. Britney's got a lot of competition on the chart next week, though, with new albums from Florida Georgia Line and Barbara Streisand looking for strong debuts. <laughs> Britney has <laughs> zero competition in my book. It's 17 songs, and she's singing, Christina. Have you heard? Yes, it's amazing. Oh my gosh, she's Repeat. singing, she's giving us life, she has found her voice, and it is glorious. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm sorry. Lindsay Sterling is no stranger to Billboard chart success. Her 2014 sophomore album, Shatter Me, debuted at number two on the Billboard 200 and number one on the top dance electronic album chart. It held on to number one on the classical albums chart for 21 weeks in a row and received a Billboard Music Award for top dance electronic album. This year, she performed at the BBMAs with Celine Dion, which turned out to be a major moment. And this week, she claims her second Billboard 200 Top 10 with her brand new album, Brave Enough, which launches at number five. Oh yeah, it also leads the classical albums, classical crossover albums, and Top Dance Electronic Albums chart as well. Brave Enough is also the second best-selling release of the week after Frank Ocean's Blown. So today you are going to perform something wild for us. Yes. That was originally created for Disney's Pete's Dragon, featuring Andrew McMahon. So tell me a little bit about that collaboration. We actually got to go in to, you know, to the Disney lot and see an early version of Pete's Dragon so we could get the inspiration for the song. Um, we saw it early in the morning. We wrote the song all day long into like the late hours of the night. So you wrote it in one day. Yeah, that doesn't usually happen for me. I'm kind of a slow writer. So a lot of times I'll take my time and like leave a song and come back to it. But that song was done in a day. On your new album, Brave Enough, mm -hmm. you have so many all-star collaborators, Christina Perry, Rivers Cuomo, yes. and you used to cover Weezer when you were in your high school band, yes. right? Yes. There's been moments writing this album, you know, working with Andrew was one of those moments. You know, when I started working with Rivers on the song and he ended up singing it, it was another moment of the 16-year-old inside of me is dying right now. And it was funny, as soon as the album went up and the track listing with all the collaborators went up online, um, I got hit up by all my old band members like, no way, Rivers! Like, they were all so excited. And so I told them, you know, when we film the music video, I'll see if I can get them out on the set. You know? <laughs> You're like, maybe I can get you in, maybe yeah. I can't. We'll see, we'll see. Now, Lindsay's about to kick off her North American Fall Tour featuring an all-new stage show. You can catch that starting on September 21st, but now we have an exclusive performance of Something Wild. The complete performance is on Billboard.com, but we'll leave you with a sneak peek right now. That's the end of season one here on Chart Center. Now stay tuned though on Billboard.com, at Billboard on Twitter, and our Facebook page for info soon on season two. For now, I'm Tetris. And I'm Christina, and here's Lindsay Sterling.